So one of the big things that we're looking for uh, in a park when we're doing due diligence, we obviously want the entrance, the curb appeal um, component of that. And this particular park already has that, which is pretty exciting. I mean, most of the parks that we go to, uh, when it comes to signage and the entrance, uh, we have a lot of work to do. And so one of our goals in the first couple months of transitioning is to get that signage up, get the entrance uh, looking good. Uh, that, that, you know, that's really where uh, you know, people are welcomed into the park. So. Um, in this particular one though, Johnny, it's pretty good, right? Very good. Uh, even when, so when we did the drive-through, even this winter, um, even before this was on the table, um, the drive-through was great. I mean, it was just super, it's just clean. Yeah. And there's no, hardly, no vacant lots, yeah. right? So it's, it's just a really, really good community. It's clean, it's, uh, it, it seems quiet. Yeah, it seems quiet up here. A big part of our model, um, as most people know, we're, we're heavy in the turnaround space, and um, but we do try to sprinkle in some stabilized parks from time to time. It is difficult, generally speaking, to get uh, affordable deals, you know, get deals at a price that uh, makes sense for our investors when they're more stabilized. But, you know, occasionally we do find a park like this. Uh, this, this, this park's just a home run. It's stable. Like Johnny said, there's no vacant lots here. The homes are in great condition. Um, and again, just even on the entrance of the park, it's just a beautiful park. One of the other things that we try to do, you know, one of our missions at Park Place is to provide safe, clean, affordable housing where people want to live. And so one of the things that we work on when we buy a community is the common areas. Um, and this particular one has it already. Yeah, which is great. So with the playground, um, you can definitely see that there's some, maybe some cleanup to do there, maybe some painting or replace some of the wood. But other than that, it's great that it already has a playground. So because we're looking at purchasing playgrounds and putting them in the rest of our portfolio. But with this one that already has it, it's got the covering um, with picnic tables, barbecue. Um, that's really park placed already, if you will. Yeah. So yeah. it's great. Yeah, we're pretty excited about this park, just generally speaking. It's already got a lot of the, um, just the community aspect of it uh, that we're trying to look for and, and build in our communities. It's, it's already here, so I'm pretty excited about this. So on every inspection, we'll come through um, with the recording. We'll, I'll, I'll read off the, the lot number or the home number. Um, walk through, checking for, you know, roof leaks. Any signs of roof leaks, like water spots in the ceiling, uh, any damage to the ceiling. Um, that's kind of a big deal, especially when you're talking about, like, uh, uh, with mobile homes. So the other thing that we look at is underneath the sinks. Um, prone to water leaks, uh, just like around the bathroom. So we'll walk around the toilet, check for soft spots on the floor. Um, so really just we're, we're looking for water damage. <clears throat> um, then I just walk through and I, I, we have to gather some information too. So on a due diligence, we'll walk through, um, get the, the amperage for the home. We'll check the pedestal on the outside, check for uh, you know how many, how many amps it's rated for outside inside um, so a lot of these homes have been converted to electric which require a 200 amp uh, service panel and pedestal <clears throat> the, the, the entire park's 200 amp um, everyone that I've seen so far but um, but for the inside it would have to be increased to 200 amp as well for electric furnace and all that stuff so with gas you can you can get away with having a 100 amp Uh, another thing that I look for too underneath sinks, um, pests, roaches, ants, um, mice, always like if, if they're here then you'll see them underneath sinks, around bathrooms, uh, kitchen sink for the, for the moisture, right? So they want water too, but um, that's where I typically see past or anything like that so that, that's another big deal that we want to look for um, when we're walking the homes so another thing we look for on the outside of the home so a lot of uh, so vinyl siding is really good um, it's a lot better looking than the metal siding that you typically see on a mobile home but the older ones I should say but you'll see um, you get a little bit of build up underneath the windows here you get a lot of build up back here um, 
one thing that we can definitely offer to a community or maybe they already do it on a regular schedule. Um, that's something that we ask in due diligence, but uh, a, a periodic pressure wash. So what they do is they actually, <clears throat> there's a possibility to um, build that into the, the actual rent or maybe it's just a service, just a, that's another thing that we could do just for retention um, is, is we offer like a pressure wash. Uh, so we'll take it, clean the entire outside. Um, it's not bad, but it, if it gets built up, then it becomes a problem. So it just looks better. It's better for the, the, the look of the community. It, it's just better um, in that aspect. But. So this house is in somewhat of a, a demo state. So the, the contractor came through that took out the moldy Wallboard, sheetrock, um, you can see some of the insulations taken out and because of the water damage. So um, there's a shed outside that was beaten on this side of the wall. At this stage, we're at uh, the point where we can put insulation back in the walls. We can start um, putting up the drywall or wallboard um, and then cabinets. Start putting in cabinets after that and then the flooring is going to be one of the last things to do. But um, this is this is where we're at as far as you know demoing out what you, or whatever needs to be taken out um, whether it's from water damage just old uh, updated you can see over here in this corner I, I would imagine we would take that fixture out the mirror that upper cabinet is just not modern enough so we like to bring in some some better wall colors um, just so it's more neutral but, uh, and, and take out some of that old stuff. So walking through this house, uh, it's in its demo state right now. Um, one thing that we really wanna pay attention to is these kind of windows. These windows have a single pane um, on the outside and they have this other one on the inside. What happens a lot is so with these single pane windows, you get a lot of moisture, a lot of sweat, like throughout the winter, uh, winter um, the summer months, um, you get a lot of condensation. So what happens with these clothes all of that moisture is gonna build up and it's gonna come down here on the sill. And then typically what it's gonna do is come down into the wall. So you'll get mold, uh, build up. The, 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 if this is wallboard, it's just gonna crumble and fall apart, kind of like over here. <clears throat> you see this falling apart, just kind of disintegrating, but that's all from moisture. Um, so we definitely go through every, Every home that we do, we, we look at the windows. Um, if they're like this, then we'll replace them. Uh, we wanna really put quality windows, dual pane, uh, vinyl, vinyl windows in, uh, just for energy uh, purposes and for, obviously we don't wanna come back in after we put a lot of work into the walls and, and get rid of the mold and all that stuff. We don't wanna come back in and um, have bad windows because that's just gonna ruin what we did. So what we do in our kitchens, we'll take these kind of cabinets out. Um, these are just really old and just not what we wanna see in our homes. Um, so we'll take these cabinets out or these cupboards. These cabinets will come out. Um, we'll end up closing up this window, removing this wallboard because we just don't want that kind of wallboard in our homes. We want that nice white um, neutral finish. So we'll take out these windows and replace them with uh, our windows like we typically put in the house, like the vinyl, um, the one size. And what we'll do here is we'll move this outlet, we'll put the window here, close these off. When these come out, we can replace our sink and put the sink in the middle by the window. Um, replace the cabinet, or the, cap the cupboards, cabinets, and the countertops. Um, and like I said, we'll move the sink. That way we have some nice natural light coming in. We'll have this window over here um, for natural light as well. So it, it's just, it makes the home look better. And then flooring. So we do vinyl flooring. We've, we've done some hardwood flooring, some click lock uh, wood flooring. It really just depends um, on, you know, what market costs are at, at the time. Um, we do a lot of vinyl flooring as well. Um, another thing I want to point out is this chase right here. You see sometimes in these older homes you got these, this old wooden chase and what they're doing is they're hiding this 
this uh, drain line from the kitchen. So with this, we'll actually remove that and we'll put the, the plumbing underneath the home like it's supposed to be. Um, that way we can utilize the space better for, for the home and for the, for the homeowner. So uh, we'll remove that, put it underneath the home. Um, another thing we'll look at too is our electrical. So this outlet, not that the, the wiring's very new, um, but we replace these boxes and we'll replace the outlets to all white. So we want to have, uh, you know, with our off-white walls, we want to have white outlets, white switches, like entire home the same, right? <clears throat> we don't want to have just hodgepodge stuff put together. So that's another upgrade that we do. A lot of operators in the industry won't purchase a park if there's a wastewater treatment plant. Right. Uh, and then every once in a while you'll run into parks too that just are on a, on a septic system. Yeah. Um, we're looking for opportunities you know, that oper other operators won't take on and so that's one of the things that we've been able to solve and a lot of people are scared of a wastewater treatment plant but really uh, as long as you're doing your due diligence on the front end and know what you need to put into it, it's like anything else. Right. Um, you either need to upgrade the system or it's been upgraded, right? Yep. Uh, and then and then just figure the maintenance that goes into it. Constant ma maintenance and uh, EPA and just checks, checks uh, daily checks for the water purification and, and making sure that the whole system is working correctly, um, which this system has been under par slightly. Okay. Uh, they actually got a violation for not meeting the requirements. So what they did, what they had in the first two sumps, they had a two inch line, air line, going in and they had a bunch of quarter inch holes drilled into it instead of having the right um, diaphragm uh, bubblers. So that's what they've recently done and actually the numbers are starting to come back up to where they need to be okay. to maintain. Um, so they, they've got one sump done, they're getting ready to do the next one. Um, and then these other two right here, they're going to go ahead and, and also add those those bubblers. Okay. So from the community, it comes into a manhole. That manhole, then it gravity feeds into the first set of sumps. So the first set of sumps where we're introducing the oxygen at that point. So the oxygen helps feed the bacteria to break down the solids um, in, in the in the uh, in the sumps. So from there, it then gravity feeds over to a second set um, and goes through, there's some weirs in there. So that actually helps prevent the solids from coming into where we want to take that water. So the water then comes into uh, the lift station. So from the lift station, then it goes into the sand beds. So what that's doing over time, more oxygen, more oxygen, it's breaking down the solids even more. Um, once it comes to the lift station, goes into the sand beds, the sand bed just acts like a filter. Um, so from the filter, it's then gravity fed off into the creek or a leach field. It really just depends on, on, on the actual uh, facility and what they have. Uh, this one in particular runs off into a creek over on the uh, side of the property. So one of the things that we talked about before um, with the wastewater treatment plant, and it's the same with the well, a lot of operators are nervous about um, having a, the, the community on a well um, or also on a, a wastewater treatment plant. But we have actually uh, found we've done a pretty good job in due diligence and as long as you know we um, plan for it, uh, there's not a whole lot that can go wrong with a well. Um, just regular maintenance, uh, it's not really that expensive to upgrade. Uh, really the only thing that uh, would happen with a well is you know you might possibly have to uh, drill deeper, bring in a driller and, and go deeper and case it. So um, it's, not, it's not really that big of a deal at the end of the day, you just gotta plan for it. Let's talk about the office. Um, so obviously it's it's gotta be clean, it's gotta look good on the outside. Um, a community without an office or even a, an inviting office, not a lot of people are gonna wanna come in. Um, that's really speaking for the company, right? That's the first thing they're going to see besides driving in. But right. um, with the office, whether it's in the back or if it's in the front, um, as long as we do have an office, keep the manager in there. That way, um, she or he can be, um, they can get a hold of that person 
at any time, whether there's issues with their home or just something going on in the, in the community. So Johnny, what are when when we come on site the, for the physical on-site due diligence? What are what are the things that you're looking for? Um, so, first thing I like to do um, when I come into a community is drive through the entire community. Uh, the things that I look for just on the surface is uh, trees. So one big thing with trees are they rotting, uh, whether from the inside or if you can actually see from the outside of the tree if there's uh, dead branches and, and things like that. Are they over the homes? Um, because those can be very hazardous, not just to the home or the car property-wise, but also kids that are playing out in the yard or whatever. So trees are a big one. Um, another is is uh, lighting. So this, this community has street lights all the way through. Um, they got nice lamp posts. Um, they're community maintained. So it's not a power company where like they have pole lights, um, so it's, it's maintained within the community. Um, next is looking at roads. Is, is there going to be a lot of capital to either repave or is it going to be, um, are, are the roads cracked or is there large potholes or anything like that? So we want to keep that in mind too, just driving through. Yep. So we talked about the roads. What else are we looking for in a community? Um, quite honestly, kids playing in the yard, that's that's kind of a big thing too. Yeah. So it's it it shows that there's community. It shows like that it's safe for it's safe. Yeah. For families and, and whoever to just hang out in the yards, barbecue, just play in the water, whatever they got to do. Yeah. And again, our our core mission is to provide safe, clean, affordable housing where people want to live, and so that's why that's so important yeah. um, to see that community aspect of the of the community. Right. What else are we looking for? Um, so along with the roads too, we can talk about the driveways. So these drives are all uh, chip seal. Uh, the only maintenance that they do on it is they spray weeds or they weed burn the weeds. Um, other than that, I'm sure periodically over the years, we'll probably just have to come back through and just do another chip seal, which is a lot better than having to pave or put concrete down for driveways. Um, but every, everything here, it's all off road parking, which is also a great aspect. In a lot of communities, um, you know, we're looking for the condition of the homes. And this particular one, the homes are actually all in really good shape. Um, so we don't have a lot of work to do here. Um, and one thing we noticed uh, on this particular community, they've taken some uh, older mobile homes that uh, were metal and they've put siding on them. Right. Um, and that's actually a, an interesting characteristic that I think we might implement in some of our parks because they just look really good. Um, this particular better. home right here, is an older home, but it doesn't really look like it. You can't tell because it's been sited. Um, so that's an interesting aspect of this park. So how about uh, the electrical? What, what, are we, what are we looking for in the electrical infrastructure? So for the power, um, one thing we do want to notice, uh, is it overhead power lines? Is it buried services? Uh, in this park in, in particular, it's all buried services, um, which makes it a lot easier uh, bringing in homes or it just looks better because all you see is trees now instead of power lines and all that stuff. But along with that, we're looking for um, any kind of corrosion on the pedestals. Um, we want to take note of if it's a 100 amp or 200 amp service. Um, those are just some simple, like quick things to look at. And at this community, they've got um, some of them are wood backers okay. to where there's, so it's not just a single pedestal sitting at each home right. they have meter banks so there's either four or maybe two uh, meters on on these boards and um, that's that's what's feeding the home okay we've talked a lot about um, the on-site due diligence what uh, talk to me a little bit about the sewer system the, the water system the, the pipes all that what are we looking for okay um, so we had rotary route this morning so that's a really big deal uh, when we're doing due diligence, we really want to take a look inside the pipes, what kind of pipe it is, what size it is, how deep is it, um, are there any cracks or uh, joints that are coming apart where we're going to get root intrusion. So roots, as you can see with all these trees here, roots could be a big deal. So that's really important for us to do that camera work um, and have somebody go down and, and get that information for us. So. Um, at this community in particular, there's no, I didn't see any clean outs at the homes, but there are manholes throughout 
on each leg okay. of the sewer system. Um, so there's your place where you can clean it out. So this particular park has clay pipes, you told me. Yep. Uh, and they're in pretty good shape? They're in uh, really good shape. We have a couple of areas where there's root intrusions, um, which we can just solve by jetting. Uh, we don't need to dig anything up or anything like that. So uh, the last time that they they had the, the, the runs jetted was about four years ago. Okay. So it's pretty good. It's a low, low cost. So Johnny, we've talked a lot about uh, the on-site due diligence, uh, infrastructure, all that. What about the water lines? What are we looking for um, when we're looking at the infrastructure when it comes to water? Um, just like with the sewer system, we want to know what, what it's made of. So what the actual lines are going in the ground. Um, are there curb stops? Are there main shutoffs at each, each one of these quadrants? Or is it one shutoff for the entire park? So um, here at Mountain View, they have uh, curb stops. Okay. So there's curb stops. Um, there's one that has a six inch lid and that does the whole quadrant. But then they have little two inch curb stops that shut the uh, water off to the actual home. Wow. Along with the shutoff that you typically have underneath the home as well. So the water infrastructure at this park is actually in pretty good shape, right? It is, yep. Cool, it's good, good to hear. What else haven't we talked about? So the roofs on the houses, um, these ones are actually all really good. Uh, a lot of older mobile homes, they get the, the metal roof. Um, one, it's loud a lot of times, um, or it's, they puncture from trees that fall, you know, branches fall, put puncture holes in them. Um, this community has a lot of metal roofs but they had a company come in and they did all, all the corrugated uh, metal roof style, but they have the in, in, insulation on there, so that adds energy savings for the for the uh, resident as well. That's awesome. Yeah, so generally speaking, like these roofs are all in pretty good shape. They are, yep. I haven't seen one that had any issues really. So, and again, this is a generalization, but when we're looking at a community, what are you looking for um, in the homes? I know, I know different communities have different models. Um, this park as it sits currently is primarily a, a park owned homes, right? So it's primarily a rental model, right. um, which we can discuss at a different time what our strategy would be with that. But what are you looking for in a park uh, when you start, when it comes to uh, looking at the homes themselves? Uh, how well are the residents taking care of the home? Um, so granted, you're gonna have turnover down the road at some point, even now, it doesn't matter, but how well are they taking care of the homes? So if the outside looks good, hopefully the inside looks the same, just as good. Um, so we wanna look for corrosion, mold, mildew, that sort of thing, water damage, if there's anything on the ceilings. It's, it's a big deal when we, when we look through, especially this park being all park-owned homes, that comes back on us to maintain them and, and to, to keep them rent ready or ready to sell. Yeah. So in this particular community, there's 79 homes in this community. Um, so when you do due diligence on a community, when it comes to the home specifically, are you looking inside of every single home? Uh, I don't go in every home. We get a good representation of, I'd say, 60, 70% of them. Um, I do try to find some of the worst looking ones on the outside. Um, that way we can get you know, a good look at that one just to, to kind of get a a sense of, of where it's at and um, yeah. 